Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. This is Love Your Work Life, episode 111. I was doing an interview prep, a mock interview with a client the other day, and we were practicing behavioral questions. And these are so intimidating for most people because it's the tell me about a time and you've kind of got to come up with some things in the moment because you're just not sure what kind of questions they're going to ask. There are questions during interviews that you know you're going to get asked. Tell me about yourself. What's your greatest weakness? What's your greatest strength? Why should we hire you? But the behavioral questions are such a place to shine. I got off track a little bit there. But to get back to the point, the behavioral question that we were practicing was describe a time when leadership was absent and how you handled it. And it got me thinking about what I call middle ground, the middle management layer, and how sometimes the things you need from the leadership hierarchy above you is not available to you. And so what do you do? You feel kind of stuck. Uh, Sometimes, you know, that can show up as zero guidance. You're getting no help whatsoever about decisions you need to make, ways to encourage your team or improve performance. Sometimes it's lack of feedback. You're just, it's, it's silence out there and you don't feel like you're getting the information that you need so that you can feel comfortable that you're meeting all of the expectations. Sometimes it's just leadership that's distracted or overwhelmed. You know, I do like to give the benefit of the doubt to the leadership at higher levels because they have more on their mind, perhaps. Sometimes, and this is, was one of my experiences, absent leadership can happen because you're working with someone who is always putting off decisions. They are not decisive. You want to be decisive, but their decisions affect the way you move forward. I had this at a, a company I worked for, and it was excruciating. We had our one-on-ones. I would go in with my list of updates, things we were working on, status reports on projects and decisions that I needed from my manager in order for me to move forward. I can't tell you how many times I left that room without a decision and had to go to my team and say, okay, we don't have a decision on this yet. So here's what we're going to do so that we can keep moving forward while we wait. And trust me, I I know exactly, if you're experiencing that, I know exactly how you feel. And it's not comfortable. It feels a little bit like you've got one hand tied behind your back and you've got to work twice as hard to keep the forward momentum going because someone is dragging you back. It can be especially frustrating, as I said, when you occupy what I call this middle ground, this middle management that you lead a team and you're also on someone else's team. And so you are responsible for your team's performance and your team's contribution to the company objectives, while at the same time, you must be responsive and accountable to 
another team that you're on. And listen, it's normal to want feedback from someone who you report to. The problem with absent leadership is not just the lack of guidance and feedback. It can be tied to feeling validated as a leader. It can be tied to your own self-confidence as a leader. So absent leadership can be very frustrating, but it can also be a little bit freeing and maybe even a little bit empowering. I realize that sounds a little weird, but I'm going to share with you three things you can do to leverage absent leadership for your favor and to keep going in the midst of not having guidance and not having the kind of feedback that you crave as a leader. The first thing I highly recommend is communication. And by communication, I mean proactive communication. I mean communication that involves the person who is absent. This can be so effective by what I call pop-ins. This is not the regularly scheduled one-on-one. These are like drive-bys where you pop in for a short check-in to share what's happening. Hey, I just want to let you know what we're working on right now. Maybe the topic of your pop-in is a problem or challenge and how you plan to handle it. You could pop in and say something like, hey, I just wanted to keep you in the loop. We're currently working on this particular problem on the project. This is how I'm planning to handle it. I just want to make sure that you are aware. Love any feedback that you might have about that, but yeah, we're ready to keep going. And as long as you're cool with this, then that's what we're going to do. The other thing with pop-ins is quick questions. Hey, I've got a quick question for you. How would you handle this? Or I'm having a conversation with this vendor and I this is what I think is going to be asked of us and I just want to ask you a quick question to make sure that I keep it on the right track. A lot of times the leaders above you, I don't even like to say above, but you get what I'm saying here. A lot of times the leaders that you report to have so much on their plate. One-on-ones become overwhelming and thinking of it from their perspective, they don't have the bandwidth to tackle all of the things. So by being proactive in your communication in a way that casually and lightly involves them through these little snippets, these little bits and pieces, you'll end up getting all the things you need and it's less overwhelming for you and less overwhelming for them. Try it. It really works. It actually works for those of you in middle management. It works both directions. I love the pop-ins on the team as well. Walk up with your coffee in the morning. Check in. How's it going? What's this project? You know, how's that deadline coming? It feels more conversational. It feels lighter. And you will be surprised at how much more efficient it is and how empowering it is for everybody involved because you can just tackle these things in little, little bits and pieces. All right. The second thing is to just ask. Ask for feedback. Ask for guidance. Don't expect the other person to read your mind. We don't get what we don't ask for. That's just a universal truth, my friend. So by stepping up and asking for the feedback and guidance that you want, you are giving the other person a chance to meet your need. It could be sharing a goal, something you've been working on. It could be asking permission to set up a time to talk. Just, hey, 
I've got a few things I'd love to chat with you about, some stuff I would love to get your guidance on. Can we set up a time for that? Another one, and I say this a lot, is practicing curiosity. Curiosity is so powerful, especially when it comes to asking for feedback or guidance. You can step into that moment and say, hey, I'm curious. What are your thoughts about this? I'm curious. How would you handle this? Do you see how, in a way, you're getting feedback, but you're also elevating their input? Everybody likes to feel important. Everybody likes to feel heard. And you're actually putting your manager in a position to be heard by you, simply by asking for the feedback. Many people are afraid to ask because you don't want to be seen as lacking in any way. You just rather wait for someone else to notice and to shower you with feedback or guidance. But listen, if you are approaching it from a place of lack, then that's how it will be perceived. If you're approaching it from a place of certainty, ease, and curiosity, curiosity like, hey, I'm pretty sure I know what I am doing, but I would love some feedback from you. That's, that's empowering. And that sense of curiosity and a, even abundance is such a great energy to take into those conversations. You can't lose when you check in with yourself first and the energy that you're bringing to that conversation. Instead of thinking it shows lack, use it to demonstrate your curiosity about their knowledge and experience. Most people like to talk about themselves and share what they know. And what a beautiful way to deepen the relationship with your manager and get what you need out of that relationship. The third piece here is acknowledge your strengths. Sometimes leadership is going to be absent and that's just going to be the way it is. Do these other two things, do the communication, ask for what you need, but in concert with that, by acknowledging your own strengths, debrief for yourself the way you would like to have it from someone else. If you were going to give yourself feedback, What would that be? I'm telling you, when you ask your brain great questions, you will get good answers. And it comes without judgment. You don't have to be putting yourself down, thinking less of yourself because you are debriefing for you on the feedback that you need, on the guidance that you need. Also, another great way to do it is to get your team involved. One of my favorite things to do was project post-mortems. In my more recent world, that was launching of new product collections, the marketing and everything around that big launch. These were big launches. Sometimes three times a year, we would launch new product collections. And they were very complex. They involved exit strategies and new products. And I love doing post-mortems and bringing in not only my team, but all of the cross-functional teams involved with that launch. Get them involved. Ask what worked, what didn't work. What would we do differently? Where were the pitfalls? How can we avoid them going forward? Anytime you involve other people, you are acknowledging their hard work, their strengths and contribution in the process, and it feels really validating for you too. Like I said, this isn't this isn't to point out all the mistakes. It's to point out, hey, we did it. There was no right or wrong here. Everybody did their best work, but how can we continue to raise the bar on ourselves? 
so good. And that feedback is going to inform the things that you do going forward. And it's such a great way for everybody to feel wonderful, including you. And the other thing here when it comes to acknowledging your strengths is share your team wins with your manager. I didn't mention it, but this is actually another great pop-in. Hey, just wanted to let you know that goal that we set for the month of whatever, we overachieved it. We actually increased by this much. We reduced tickets by this much. The stats involved with the work you do, the KPIs, the metrics, whether those are numerical or just relational. Share these wins with your manager. Some of them will be individual wins that are just yours and the things that you own. I love it when you share the team wins because that is helping your manager see bigger value not just in you as an individual manager, but in your ability to create results through a team. And that just positions you for more responsibility, increased value exchange. You know what I mean by that? The more value you contribute, the more you will receive in return for that. And the more you can ask for it legitimately. So my friends, if you are experiencing absent leadership, don't let it get you down. Let it be the thing that motivates you to be more proactive, communicative, involve your manager in the little things. Let it be your motivation to ask for feedback and start creating conversation and let it especially be your opportunity to give yourself feedback, to look for validation from within inside yourself when you're not getting it from other people. All right, my friends, go out there and leverage absent leadership to your advantage. I'll talk to you again soon. If you like this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you'll find all the information you need to work with me one-on-one, as well as get access to my courses, Job Search Field Guide, and The Art of Stellar Interviews. I can't wait to help. I look forward to seeing you there.